today from Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas. Join us for John Osteen. For more than 50 years, John Osteen has been making a difference in people's lives, showing the world that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Founder and pastor of Lakewood Church, John Osteen has dedicated his life to reaching the unreached and telling the untold. In America, reaching out to the poor, winning the lost, and changing lives on the street, on the job, and even in prison. Overseas, taking the power of the gospel to places that have never heard the name of Jesus Christ. Join us at Lakewood Church, the oasis of love in a troubled world. A church with a worldwide vision, reaching the lost here in the United States, and dedicated to taking the gospel to the nations of the earth, to preach, teach, and heal, just as Jesus did. Today, your life can be changed as God's Word comes alive in you. Don't miss the next 30 minutes with your host, Pastor John Osteen. Hello, everyone. I'm Victoria Osteen, and we've got an exciting half hour in store for you. In just a moment, we're going to join Pastor Osteen and thousands of others in the main sanctuary of Lakewood Church as we study God's Word together. You know, 8,000 people in one service is hard to believe. But Lakewood Church didn't always start out that way. As a matter of fact, it began in this vacant feed store on Mother's Day in 1959. After receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit, Pastor Osteen and a handful of others formed Lakewood Baptist Church. Here, Pastor Osteen began preaching that Jesus Christ was the same yesterday, today, and forever, and miracles started happening, and the church began to grow. Well, we've been through a lot of changes the past few years. Lakewood's grown from that humble feed store to a number of different auditoriums, and finally, to this beautiful 8,000-seat auditorium you see right here. So remember, just as God's blessed this church, He wants to bless your life also. But right now, let's join my father-in-law, Pastor John Osteen, as he shares on how valuable you are to God. Hello, I'm Pastor John Osteen of Lakewood Church, and we welcome you to the program today. We're always glad that you tune in. Give them a good amen. amen. And I want to give you a scripture that'll bless you. Sometime when you get tired and weary, remember the scripture. Psalm 138:3. When I pray, you answer me and encourage me by giving me the strength I need. Now, all you have to do is pray, and, and God will answer you. God likes to answer the prayers of his children, and he says, that his word says that he will encourage you and give you the strength that you need. So when you're tired, just pray. And God will answer you and give you strength you need. And everybody and said amen. amen. All right, let's hold up our Bibles. Wave them around and you folks in television can do the th same thing. Let's say it together. This is my Bible. Is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated and open your Bibles, please, to Mark chapter 12. We'll begin to read with verse 29. And Jesus answered him, This, first of all, commandment is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like it, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I want to preach on this question today. How valuable are you? Jesus said we should love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Could it be that God expects us to love ourselves? Now, I'm not talking about egotistical arrogance 
and being pompous and puffed up and, uh, you know, so in love with ourselves, we don't think there's anybody else in the world like us. There should be in our lives a sense of value that we are to God. You know, the devil spends his time beating people down. And we end up with a bad self-image. And we sort of don't like ourselves. Unless you learn to like yourself, you're not going to like very many other people. How valuable are you? You know, I tell this story. People have wrong ideas about God. They think God looks down and he sees with his special eyes all of our defects and all of that. And they just know that God doesn't like them. How valuable are you? This man named Clyde, do you all know the story? He was complaining. Everything had happened to him. And uh, he had gone through the storms and the vicissitudes of life. And finally he got mad one day and he looked up and he said, God, why have you done this to me? Why did you send this disease? Why did you send this trouble? Why did you do this, God? He stood still a moment and a voice out of heaven said, I don't know, Clyde. There's just something about you that ticks me off. <laughs> and that's the way people think God looks at them. Oh, they think God looks at them and said, I don't know, Mary, I don't know, Evelyn, I don't know, Jack. There's just something about you that ticks me off. No, you got to have an idea of how valuable you are to God. Yeah. A friend of mine, a preacher friend of mine, got a letter, and he said, uh, and this letter from this woman said, you know, uh, uh, I'm ugly, and, and, and I weigh too much, and, and, and I'm critical of people, and, 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 and this, that, and this, and that, and this, and that, and this, and that, went on two or three pages of her bad things, you know, and her question was, is, why don't people like me? And this preacher friend of mine wrote back and said, after reading your letter, I don't like you either. <laughs> Stop saying bad things about yourself. You're not near as bad as you think you are. How valuable are you? You need to see yourself as God sees you. Years ago, I was in a Baptist service, a, a brotherhood a service, where they met with the men and the young men. And it, it was so shocking to me. I didn't know what was going on uh, when they did this. But a man jumped up. And he said, I have a boy. And he brought a boy up there on the platform. He said, I have a boy. I want to sell this boy. I want to sell this boy. Who will buy this boy? It was so shocking. Never, nobody knew what, what, what was going on. And a man jumped up over here. And he said, I represent, I represent the entertainment world. I'll give a million dollars for that boy. He said, anybody else would, uh, the alcohol man jumped up and said, I re re represent the alcohol uh, industry. I'll give $2 million for him. And another one jumped up and said, I represent the pornographic uh, area of life. I'll give you $5 million for him. Another one jumped up and said, I represent the drug scene. I'll give you $10 million for that boy. Everything got quiet. A man stood up and said, I've been authorized by God Almighty to say that I'll do more than the drug and the alcohol and the entertainment and the pornography world. I'll give heaven's best. I'll give my son the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> you see, you must value yourself when you realize the price God paid for you. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life how valuable are you how valuable are you to god you're so valuable jesus said the kingdom of god is like a man who found a treasure in a field and he went home and sold all that he had and bought that field. See, you are the treasure in the field of the world. God saw you. 
I don't care where you are in life. You may be a prostitute. You may be a rich businessman. You may be a, on drugs. You may be a battered wife or a battered, battering husband. I don't know where you are, but God sees every human being as a treasure. Heard the story about Michelangelo. Michelangelo had a huge a block of uh, a stone and he was beating away on it with a chisel and a hammer and somebody came to him and said, what are you doing with this great big uh, piece of stone here? He said, I see, I see an angel in there. See, he was a sculptor. He knew how to bring it out. He said, I see an angel in there and I am trying to release that angel. See, God looks at you and you to the world and to yourself sometimes. You're just a great big old rough rock with a lot of rough edges. But God says, I see not an angel, but a son, a daughter of the living God. Amen. And I want to release that son or daughter of the most high God. I want you to know that God looks down and looks into your life and no matter what condition you're in, you're of great value to God. I think about the fact that, that the Pharisees came to John and, and John said, I'm not the Messiah. They said, then what sayest thou of thyself? And that's a good question. What are you saying about yourself? I'm a failure. I'm a prostitute. I've lost my virginity. I've lost my wealth. I've lost my health. I've lost everything. I don't mount uh, to anything. I, I'm, just, I'm just a nothing in life. No. What sayest thou thyself? Say what God says. God says you're blessed. So I agree with God. I'm blessed. Amen. But you know, life beats us down so much. I heard Dr. Bill Henson, who is pastor of the First Methodist Church here, and a good friend of mine, I heard him tell a story about something that was in the paper. He said this woman down in Galveston had a bird, sang all the time. And one day she took the vacuum cleaner and, you know, she's going to put it down on the bottom where the bird droppings were and clean out all that cage. <laughs> and uh, Bill Henson said, uh, Dr. Henson said, uh, the telephone rang. And she turned around to answer the phone and didn't pay attention to what she was doing with that vacuum cleaner. And that vacuum cleaner got that bird and <laughs> went right down to the bag. She put down the phone, pulled the vacuum cleaner apart, began to dig and dig and dig and dig and dig and dig and finally found the little bird and dusted it off and rushed it out to the bird doctor and they, they, they pulled everything out of its throat and everything, you know, and finally it opened his eyes. <laughs> Now, Dr. Henson, I'm stretching it a little bit, see. <laughs> see, when I get through it, the story is it's a little better than you told me. <laughs> Banded his eyes. And Dr. Henson said, the woman put the little thing back in the cage. But there was a great change in that bird. <laughs> the bird used to sing. But now, the article said, the bird just sat there and stared. <laughs> Used to have a song, but just sat there and stared. And you know, I thought as I listened to that great preacher preaching, I thought that's what the devil has done to us. We've sung our songs. We thought we were going to do good in life. And the devil has brought his vacuum cleaner and sucked us down into the bag. And now we've, we've been battered and torn and we've had everything in the world happen to us and we stand uh, on the horizon of life and wonder what can happen next. Sure, they've cleaned our mouth out, but we just sit there and stare. We don't think much of ourselves anymore. You know, David said, I... I waited patiently for the Lord. I sought the Lord and he heard my cry and he brought me up out of a miry pit and he set my feet on solid ground and he has put a new song in my mouth. Oh, 
you might have been sucked down in the vacuum cleaner, but God can put a new song. How valuable are you? How valuable are you? See, Jesus sees the value. I think about my own life, and you've heard me tell it so much. A dropout of high school, selling popcorn in the ISIS theater, coming home from a nightclub in South Fort Worth, Texas, two o'clock in the morning, lost, undone without God. I didn't have any value of myself. I'd stood in the bread lines and the milk lines to get Blue John milk. We knew what it was to go to, to, go to school without any, any uh, soles in our shoes and, and carry maybe one biscuit to, to eat at lunch. Uh, we, we knew what it was to go without food. I had a low opinion of myself. I, I didn't feel like I could ever do anything in life. And uh, I, everything I saw was poverty. But Jesus looked at me. And he didn't see an angel in a stone. He saw a pastor. And he saved me. And he called me. Oh, what confidence that put in me to think the King of kings and the Lord of lords would call me. How valuable he must think I am. Amen. Jesus looked at the rich young ruler. He had great wealth. And the Bible says he loved him. He said, Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And, and, and Jesus looked at him and loved him. The door, story didn't turn out too good. But when Jesus saw him, you know, you know, he saw the, the love that welled up in him. He saw something in him. He saw a young man that could be unloosed from the love of money. He saw a young man who could bless the kingdom of God. He saw a young man who could help the poor and the struggling. He saw a young man with great resources that could bless people everywhere. He loved him and he wanted to bring it out. But the young man turned aside and turned his back and left Jesus. You see, Jesus looks at the prostitute and sees a clean woman. Jesus looks at the drug addict and sees somebody delivered. Jesus sees those who are downtrodden and he sees them set free. You know, today you may be a battered wife. You may be bruised and blackened by some ungodly husband. And you may be so low in your self-esteem, you think, well, God would never have anything to do with me at all. I want you to know you are valuable to God. And I want to tell that battering husband, even God loves you and he can set you free. You may be a drug addict and you may be down so low and you may think, well, I'm not worth anything at all to God. But how valuable are you to God? God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God wants you to value yourself. You know, in, in Luke chapter 15, God shows there through the lips of Jesus clearly to every human being on earth how valuable you are to God. He said there was a man who had a hundred sheep and one. Everybody shout one. one. Shout it out. One. one went out. Away out on the hills where the wolves and the cows were a lost. Now, Jesus said that the shepherd left the ninety and nine and went after how many? One. I can't hear you. One. one after one. Do you know what he was saying? If you had been, now listen to me. All you thousands who are gathered here, you come here depressed today maybe. Maybe you're thinking low of yourself. You think you're not amount to anything. You'll never get out, out of a welfare. You'll never get off of food stamps. You'll never have a good job. You'll never be able to change your life. Listen to me. God is saying through the lips of Jesus, if you had been the only person in the world that was lost, God would have come for you. 
That's hard for us to believe. We can believe that God loves the world in a great, uh, a mass uh, sort of way. But it's difficult for us to believe that God loves us. You say, well, Brother Osteen, you don't know how I've lived. But you're that one lost sheep here to come for you. There was one a woman that had ten coins, lost one. And uh, the, she lighted a candle and be, forgot about the night, began to search for the, for the one lost coin. God says, I'd come for one lost coin. You see, we need to realize that God loves us. You say, but you don't know where I am. Let me tell you, Ephesians 2 tells us where God found us, where he found all of us. And you, and they made alive who were dead. Dead in trespasses and in sins. Where in times past we walked according to the course of this world. Paul said, among whom also we all had our manner of life in times past. In the lust of our flesh. And we're by nature, by nature, now think of this, by nature the children of wrath. That's where God found all of us. The church is not a place where we display uh, perfect people. The church is for hurting humanity. But where God found us, He doesn't leave us. He said, sure, you were dead in trespasses and in sins, and you walked according to the course of this world. But then the next verse says, but God. Everybody shout, but God. Shout it out three times. But God, who is rich in mercy. Oh, he sees the angel in the rock. Oh, he sees the son and daughter of God. Oh, he sees somebody liberated and set free. This church is filled with people who are that way, and now they're saved and delivered by the power of God. Amen. Could I have an amen? amen? Oh, thank God. He didn't leave us there. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath made us alive amen. together with Christ. By grace we're saved. You know, we, we should look at people like God sees them. When Jesus looked at Peter and Matthew and Paul, James, John, all those, the world saw tax collectors. The world saw fishermen. And in Peter's case, they saw a failure. But Jesus saw Mighty men and women of God. How valuable are you? It's not what you think of yourself. It's what God thinks of you. When God, when the Lord looked at Saul of Tarsus, breathing out threatenings, hating the Christians, destroying the church, Dragging men and women to jail. St standing there when Stephen is stoned to death. Saying, Amen. That's right. Do it. He deserves it. And some of you listening have had a hard attitude toward God in the church and others. But I want you to see how God saw this man that breathed out threatenings. Jesus looked at him and saw an apostle that would write half the New Testament. When he was on his way to Damascus, a light shined from heaven. Oh, what unmatched love. The greatest enemy of the church, and yet all heaven stops, and God puts a spotlight on him. There's hope for you. There's hope for you. There's hope for you. The meanest man. Nobody ever expected him to amount to anything. But Jesus came to him. And he said to Ananias, he's a chosen vessel to me. See, that's why you turn on this television. You're a chosen vessel. You say, well, I'm a drunkard. You're a chosen vessel. I'm a prostitute. You're a chosen vessel. I'm rich and mighty. You're a chosen vessel. I'm poor. You're a chosen vessel. Oh, I, I've lost all of my morals. You're a chosen vessel. See, if you don't like the way you got born the first time, get born again. Amen. 
Because Jesus can make the difference. Twas battered and scarred, and the auctioneer thought it scarcely worth his while to auction off the old violin, but he held it up with a smile. Who would start the bidding for me? One dollar one, two dollars two, going for three, but no. From the room far back, a gray-haired man came forward and picked up the bow. And wiping the dust from the old violin, tightening up the strings, he played a melody pure and sweet, as sweet as an angel sings. The auctioneer, with a voice that was quiet and low, picked up the old violin and held it up with the bow. What am I bidding for the old violin? Who'll start the bidding for me? One thousand, one. Who'll make it two? Two thousand. Who'll make it three? Going for three. Going and gone, said he. The people cheered. But some of them cried, We don't quite understand. What change is this worth? Quick came the reply, the touch of the master's hand. And many a man with life out of tune and battered and torn by sin is auctioned off to a thoughtless crowd much like that old violin. A mess of pottage, a glass of wine, a game, and he travels on. He's going once, he's going once, twice. He's going, and he's almost gone. Then the master comes, and the thoughtless crowd never can quite understand the worth of a soul and the change that's wrought by the touch of the master's hand. I want him to touch you today. He can touch you and change your life, wipe away your past and all your sins, and make you a totally new creature. Let Jesus in your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and make, I make you the Lord of my life. I want you to lift me. I want you to save me. I want you to be my Lord this very day.